Where did you get the inspiration for this one from? Harry Potter. From Harry Potter? Yeah, I can see that. I got a gigantic safe, I'll tell you the reason why. Because I used to sell farm, it's got my shops in it. Even but, your pizza cutter, so every time you have a pizza, yeah, you have to come and get yeah. that out, don't we? Right, Tanya. Hi, it's, Tanya. Shall we tell Lee that you've been here since more or less day one, haven't you? Yeah. Tanya. And who's your favourite team? Forest. Forest. Yeah. Man United. <laughs> Forest. I've just enjoyed my job. Yeah. See the smiles on the faces. The way that you lead and, me and mentor me is that what I want to I want to be what you were for me. Does that make sense? I don't know why these are sorry. Hi, I'm Lee and today I'm visiting a care setting operated by a charity called United Response. The setting is unique offering housing to adults and young people who have a wide variety of learning disabilities and mental health needs. Today, I'm going to be introduced to the residents and invited into their homes. I will also be talking to the staff, family members, and the wider support network about how crucial places like this are to the people who call it home. My day starts in the common room, where I say hello to the residents, including Lara, the youngest person at Dallas Street, who came from child services. Chris, who moved in more recently. Uh, since November 13th last year before Christmas. Dawn, who has been at Dallas Street for five years. <laughs> and Sean, whose sister was visiting today. The talk quickly moved on to the fun games and activities that happen here. Yeah, oh, Uno's legendary. Yeah, I've heard about Uno here. <laughs> Including a stage production that proved to be so popular, it's been thought to be commissioned. Everybody shares their stories, however, it created much more than that. It created this now friendships out of the production, people meet up. And I think this is the longest yeah. period we've gone without doing a production and now I'm having emails and text tell? messages. Liz, when are we doing the next one? Next week, when are we doing the next one? Um, but on the back of that came lots of positives as well because we're hoping to get it commissioned. I noticed Dawn hugging Sean and being very aware of other people's well-being. You do look after me, thank She's you. She's like the one that arm. Thank you, Dawn. I like it's a Dallas, you know. I love the staff here. What did you say the other week? That, what? that the staff sometimes you, you feel like a fa family. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really important. I think that's the vibe at Dallas Street. It's very much nurturing, letting people do what they want and just being there for guidance rather than, rather than being restrictive. This is clearly a very safe space for residents, with Sean opening up to the group. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. I work at Sense Child Shop. I've been working there for four years. Instead of being stuck inside and looking at four walls all the time, it's better going work, working outside at child shops because socialising with us other customers. Like I've, I've met some friends um, from community, and they're always talking to me and he was once bloke once. Do you know them um, rap a day that you can get from uh, McDonald's? He says to me, he says to me, Sean, I've got a present for you. I says, what is it? He says, I've got a rap for you. <laughs> he gave me a rap, so that was my breakfast sorted. <laughs> With Sean being so open, discussing his late mother having schizophrenia and how he was in foster care, I was intrigued to find out more about his background. Tracy knows I really bad with mental health. I tried to stab myself near and I. And um, what happened was, there was this lady called Robbie, she did um, role playing all that with me because she's from New Zealand and she's done quite a bit of it in New Zealand. And she helped me because, say my bed's here, I stood here, Robbie stood the other side of my bed and I faced in the wall and uh, she says to me, she says to me, Sean, don't, don't go down that road, you don't want to do it, you want to calm down and just relax and put the knife down. And guess what I did? 
put the knife down so she really helped. They had like a payphone in the corner and my, sis my sister to calm me down each day. I didn't have a mobile, mobile phone like I've got now. She, she used to ring me every day. Oh, yeah. And she used to calm me down, made me relax. I'm and important to you. Yeah. Family are important to me. My sister is my life. Oh. <laughs> what difference do you think Dallas Street has made to Sean? Um, it's made a big difference because we've got him to the stages of going out, building his confidence, being out in the community. He's had meals with staff, he's had day trips with staff. But we're... from where my mum was passing away and dying, to that devastation, to where Sean's at now, I think it's really impressive. Um, and it's only going to keep getting better. Yeah! yeah. yeah. After our common room chats, Lara invited me up to her flat to show me her art and what she does at college. Oh, wow. Have you ever made any of these? No. No? Can I look through it? Yeah. Did you draw this? And do you do your own sewing as well, don't you? Yeah, I've got my own mannequin and my oh, wow. fabric as well. I'm really jealous. And how long have you been at the college here? Since September when you moved? Since last year. I went last year. It's my second year at college. Right. It's incredible. What do you want to do when you finish college? Fashion designer. Oh, this is orange matches my jumper. <laughs> After being at Lara's, I wanted to find out more about how Dallas Street became the thriving, welcoming place it is now. You project managed Dallas Street, didn't you? Yeah, so it was um, a new scheme at the time. So it's a multi-occupancy scheme where um, anybody from adult social care can get a referral through to live here. Part of our job was kind of um, trying to think outside of the box and think how that we could manage all of those risks and provide a nice homely environment for people to live in. Yeah, to be there, to not to restrict anybody in any way, to let them, because I think it, with Dallas Street, you live, I think everybody feels like they're in control of their own lives. And to me, that's really, really important. Dallas Street has become a goal, hasn't yeah. it? A motivator um, for the people that we, we support, because they all say to me, Liz, I want to live at Dallas Street. Liz, I want to go to Dallas Street, because the goal mm -hmm. is, you want your own bathroom, yeah, you want your own front, front door. door. People want these more than the sh sort of shared schemes that we've got now. Liz and Liv clearly love what they do, but this must be a challenging place to work. We ask a lot of our support workers as well at Dallas Street because we're supporting a wide range of people with differing needs from uh, people with profound uh, physical disabilities to mental health, uh, personality disorders, to people being on the autistic spectrum. So we're changing lots of different hats all the time, aren't we? Which is, is quite challenging, but also developing people's resilience because burnout is obviously mm. quite a risk and, and all those kind of things. But generally people tend to um, have a preference or they tend to be better suited to work with certain people yeah. whereas here you've kind of got to be able to work yeah. with a lot you've of people. You've got to be, which was, which was a challenge wasn't it? Um, I'm super yeah. super proud of where we, because it's been six years next month, it's mm. etched in my brain um, and I'm super proud where Dallas Street has been and what we've retrieved. We still get things wrong on occasion but I feel that we learn our biggest lessons from things when things don't go as well as what we've planned. So. And there was no blueprint because of this being one of the first of its kind. United Response had never done anything like this. We had to all kind of work together and kind of figure it out, make, make a few mistakes and we definitely keep trying different yeah. things. Um, and actually, you know, learning from those has, has enabled us to do what we do today. There's people that have lived here that have moved on, that still come back and visit. We may support them on outreach. But when that's, we know we're doing a good job when people move on and yeah. they become independent and they don't need us anymore, don't we? You should almost be doing yourself out of a job, shouldn't you? As Liz and Liv mentioned, the residents vary in their care needs. To facilitate this, Dallas Street is split into individual flats and also what they have named the bungalow which is home to three residents who require 24-7 care. We'll see, we'll see Tanya and Paul, shall we? We'll have a quick word. 
He goes on holiday, don't you? Yeah. Tell tell what? him where you've been. I I went to to I went there a couple of days ago. Wow. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. We forgot to tell me and I'm all what what else you do? He goes to a lot of theatre shows as well, don't you? Oh, I'm going to one in three weeks. Yeah, Karina texts at you there, don't he? Yeah. Oh, it's Richard taking him this time. That's Karen anyway. Karen's been here nearly 10 years, aren't you, Doris? Yes. Yeah. 10 yeah. years this year? Next year. Next year. What's the difference between this setting over here in the bungalow and the flats this next to us? This is a assistant. They all need assistance with the personal care, whereas that side's supported, so it's more taking them out in the community, supporting them out there. Being in the bungalow for just a few minutes, you can see how much the carers love their jobs. I've been retired now two years, but I still come back. So I at least do about 16 hours a week. So Why do you come back? Because I don't like retirement, but I can't do too much. So at least this company, they give me the opportunity to come back, so. I keep hearing the word family. Everyone keeps describing it as family. What makes you think it's a family in that way? I think what it is, um, to me, being a part of a family, it's for the one reason, like Paul, like Tanya, they don't get visitors. You know, not a lot of visitors. But they, as I say, it's like as soon as we walk in, they know, they like to know who's on shift. You know, but as I say, that's why I, because I enjoy supporting people. Oh, <laughs> come on. Please, yes, please. Oh, that better? Yes, that's... Oh. You want some chocolate? I've oh, tried. Oh, no, it's a bar of chocolate. chocolate. She's got some buttons. Oh, you got some buttons? Do you want a button? Yes, please. That's better. Oh. She never used to be able to talk. Yeah. She didn't really speak a lot. And uh, to how she speaks now... It's she, amazing. It's a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. And we know by... If she says... Because people say she don't know things, she don't know what things are, but she does. If you ask her something, we can tell if it's and if she's saying no, because she'll say no all the time. If you say to her something, she normally say yes to. She might say because she's feeling like I'm not going to say yes. I'm going to say no. She'll say no, but we can tell if she actually means no, because we've been with her that long. We know if she means a yes or she means a no. Because I think where she was before, they didn't really interact with her very much. Whereas here, she's got interaction from other people, different ages as well. Yeah. And she's, as even her sister said, she's a lot, she, you just, she's a lot happier. No! Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're going to say no now. So you're not happy? No. Um, Are you sad? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you don't like living here? No. Where do you want to live? No. You want to live with me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After talking to Tanya, I wanted to understand from the care worker's perspective why they chose this career. I did health and social care at college, and then as soon as I turned 18, just went straight to this. And then I went to uni, got a degree, and then came back. <laughs> wow, you came back here? I came back here, yeah. Why did you come back here? I don't know. <laughs> I love it that much. <laughs> why do you do it? I just like helping other people. I can't not. If I see somebody in the street struggling, I help them in the street. It's just, I think it's part of certain people mm. seem to be able to do, you've, you've either got it or you haven't. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's changed you in any way whilst you've been here? I'm just softer. <laughs> You're softer? Very soft, <laughs> just a lot softer, more chilled. I, I am a chilled and patient person anyway. You've got, I think you've got to have patience with them because you can have challenging behaviours um, and they can push you to your yeah. limits sometimes. How do you see your career in social care developing? I don't know. It's made me grow up a lot faster. Like I've so having that much responsibility as a just turned eighteen year old, like now I'm I'm in charge of people not in charge but like I'm in charge of giving people medication. It's scary. But now it's like second nature really. I don't think any different. The talk turned to how things have changed in this sector, predominantly how moving on from paper to digital has transformed the caregiving experience. 
Katie, what what volume do you think? Because she used, used to be here when we used to write the daily notes, but what do you think the volume is now with Nourish, that we're doing it on the phone? Do you feel it's more better? So much easier. What makes it easier? Because you're not writing. Yeah, you're not just sat there writing, and then you can just, after you've done everything, you can just sit down, type, you know, I mean, everyone's on phones now. Well, That's what, yeah, you can literally sit there and just type so fast. Do you think it benefits these guys that you can do it that way? Yeah, because we have so much more time. They're involved right. in it. Yeah, and yeah. Involved. more involved. <laughs> we'll be like, take a picture for Nourish. All right. We'll post. <laughs> <laughs> you all like sleep, didn't it? Yeah. It's like anything, when you're out, if we're doing something out, you get that shot straight away. Mm. Whereas when you have to write on, yeah. you have to wait till you got back, Yeah. then sit writing it. But you, know, you don't really have pictures because not everybody had phones at the time. So Like got... when we took them bowling the other day, <laughs> it was so much easier just to whip out your phone, <laughs> take a couple of photos, that's your evidence, yeah. rather than sat there in a bowling alley, yeah. writing your notes. We sat in so, a bowling alley. Yeah. <laughs> you're, pro you're proving it, that's what they, and you can see that they're enjoying it while you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. Have you had that? Yeah. Yeah, would you like another one? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Do you want to plug up on? You ready? Do you like it? Mm. Don't get doffed into this. I bumped into Dawn who invited us down to the Hub, a social event that was created due to people feeling lonely after the Covid pandemic. The Hub has now expanded with the help of the local authority and allows for weekly meetups with people from different care facilities or people who are alone to catch up, have a cup of tea and biscuits, play games, chat and form friendships. These friendships then allow for new experiences outside of the hub, with many members then going out for lunches or to the cinema together. Stacy is one of the team here who helps set up the hub. What's the benefits you see from something like this? So they're able to interact together, they're able to do different activities, we can help them with things like the bills and things like that. Um, it's just able, that they're able to just have social interaction really. Um, and we've found that over the weeks when it first started there was like a minimum of like a couple of people come and now on a weekly basis we like to see about 20 odd people come in so it's just growing and I think long term because we've got day centres in our area closing I think it's a benefit for them to know that this is available for them. Brilliant, it's going, thank you. Whilst at the Hub, Dawn opened up a little about her harrowing upbringing, the immense struggles and the hardships that were forced upon her. Hearing these made me realise just how essential the Hub and Dallas Street is to people like Dawn. To have a place where Dawn feels safe, loved and wanted. Rhiannon Miller, the Senior Commissioning Officer for Notts County Council, came down to the Hub we had a chat about the impact of Dallas Street and the hub to the residents. What, what, what do you see when you look at Dallas Street? Well, it's supported living, so we want people to feel like they've got their own home and it's not institutionalised and that it's somewhere that people can really make themselves part of their community, have rights of tenure, um, everything that we would expect from our own homes. And I think when you go to the places like Dallas Street, you would probably get that feeling of it being quite family orientated, friendship groups. Um, so that's what we would really want for people. Amazing. What differences have you been able to see in the people that live at Dallas Street? Oh, they're so much more um, confident in what they're doing now. And you'll probably see some people come in here today that live at Dallas Street. And it's nice that they feel that they can come out and socialise with people that they live with, but also all the people in the community as well, which is probably something that they've not had opportunities to do before. The next 12 months, what do you see as the biggest challenges for you, for the local area, for services like Dallas Street? I think there's always going to be financial pressures. Places like Dallas Street is something that we're really eager to develop more of. Um, so, although there's pressures, we're really eager to make sure that we don't fall short on offering people places like Dallas Street and supported living opportunities. So hopefully we'll see more of it rather than challenges. I headed back to Dallas Street to join with the care team, Sean and his sister in his flat. The team were carrying out a regular review with Sean. But before the review began, Sean proudly showed us round his flat, 
where we got to see his funny, warm character. Yeah, this is my fish tank. Some fish passed away. I had to do CPR, but it did work. <laughs> Might get some more later on. Yeah. Art the Clown. Yeah, these are all my pictures. I'm part of royalty now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, part of royalty. <laughs> Is Roy Keane your favourite player? No, um, it's got to be David Beckham. Beckham? All, all the way. You can't beat David Beckham. Had my decorating done a few months ago now, was not it? Yeah. yeah. I love this wallpaper. Go yeah, I, I picked it. I'm oh, I've got some jokes for you. Listen to these. Oh, right. they're going to be rude. No, they're not rude. Oh, <laughs> no swearing them up. Oh. <laughs> right, this couple, um, talk, these retired couple in in the um, care home are talking about um, the partners and one woman says, she says, oh my husband's got a terrible habit of biting his nails. Or woman says, yeah, so has mine, but he don't do it no more because I hid his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Sean then talked us through why he has a large safe in his living room. I've got a gigantic safe, I'll tell you the reason why. Um, because it keeps my meds in. What else does it do? I can save money for it, can't I? Yeah. And also, because I used to sell farm, it's got my shops in it. Even but, your pizza cutter, so every time you have a pizza, yeah, you have to come and get yeah. that out, don't we? So, um, what you call it? So, so now, this, this slowly withdrawing it, aren't they? It, it takes time, but eventually, it'll be all sorted. We then all sat down to start the review. All right, so if we can, if we make a start, so the first thing is, Sean, what we're going to do is ask people what people actually like and admire about you. Right. OK, so can I start with Tracy? I think he's really good at being able to communicate and help other people, and he always likes, no matter where he's been, he's always liked helping. He's always liked organising things. As much as when he were really, really poorly and he was in hospital, I kept saying, put him into places where he can help. I said, because that will make him better. How do you feel about hearing that, Sean? Yeah, that's that's really nice to hear. Yeah. Melissa, what would you say? Um, Sean's sense of humour um, is always really good at making people laugh, um, especially when people are down. You'll always try and make a joke and make people feel better. Yeah. And you're very kind, like Christmas times, you always buy these guys presents and you don't have to do that. You always go out your way to make people feel special. Yeah. It's like it's like with Dawn, I bought <laughs> uh, um I got her Easter egg. Mm. I got her birthday present. Mm. I, I got a Two Christmas presents, which she loves. Um, she, wa she wanted to see the film Barbie, so I got that DVD. She didn't even know about it. She was really happy. She was nearly in tears when I came back because I got her um, them presents. She's a really nice person, isn't she, at heart. Sometimes, sometimes she can have ups and downs, but can't everyone? Everyone has, everyone has the ups and downs. And um, you just try to make everyone positive. And for me, Sean, I really appreciate the fact that when we've had like new people that have moved into Dallas Street, you've really looked out for them and you like coached them through things. I think um, you've done absolutely amazing. So for that, I want to say to you, really well done, Sean. Thank you. The review was a fantastic opportunity to see the open and safe culture the residents have at Dallas Street. Sean talked about how he would like to start cooking fresh meals, but would need support due to his shakes, and how he is proud he hasn't suffered from a fit for 18 months. 
Sean's sister Tracy was asked where she would like to see Sean in the future. I want Sean so we can progress, so, you know, going into employment, yeah. so we can actually, whether it's part-time or full-time, maybe part-time or something, to start him off where it could even help other people who's probably suffering themselves with, you know, mental health or anything as well, because I think he'd be really good at it. Sean then opened up about his future aspirations. Like, because uh, uh, I got bullied when I was at school, I didn't have the chance to do my GCSEs, so if, so what I'd like to do, I had spoke to this before, have I? Um, what I'd like to do, I'd actually like to do my GCSEs, because that, I don't think you know about this, but it would really, it would help me get a job. So when those reviews are, completed, what do yeah. you do with that on Nourish? So we'll take photos of them um, and we'll put them, we'll upload them, the photos of them. On our Nourish there's something for um, outcomes and aspirations so that all will be captured on there as part of um, Sean's review. And it's person centred, it makes sure that we're going in the right way, that all our ta ta support is tailored to um, Sean's or whoever's, whoever's reviews we're doing his needs. Why do you do it? Oh, why do I do it? I love it. I love it. I don't. I never went into it to be a service manager. I was. I came here as a team manager. Liv um, was a support worker, team man, senior support worker, team manager, and now just recently is a regional manager. I've been with United Response for 11 years. Before that, I was with the NHS and different providers. I've not learned so much since I've started working at United Response. And a lot of it is down to your... Oh, am I getting emotional? Sorry! <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Um, the way that you lead and, me and mentor me is not what I want to. I want to be what you were for me. Does that make sense? I don't know why these are sorry. But no, you are... She always makes us think outside our box. When in my time I'm not doing that and I can't, I can't do, do that. that. Liv's gone to me, yes you can and you will go and do it. And I sometimes feel like I've got imposter syndrome because when you have, I've not really, do you know what I mean? I've not got a university degree. I've got none of those things. However, um, I do love being with people. I'm a chatterbox and I like seeing people live happy lives and achieving their goals and aspirations. That's what's important to me, seeing Dawn go on holiday, Sean doing all he's doing and the hubs or everybody coming together and seeing those friendships. What we achieve together is so, so, so impressive, I feel. I'm, I'm super proud of what we've achieved, haven't I? <laughs> My time at Dallas Street is coming to an end, but the people I have met, the kindness I have witnessed and the empathy, the warmth, the laughter is all something I will never forget. What has been created within these walls is something special for the people that work here, but most importantly for the people who call it home. Mm -hmm.